Welcome to Long Range Shooters of Utah. Today we're going to do an unboxing of the Silencer Co. Radius Weapons Mounted Laser Range Finder. Really excited to open this up and see what kind of fun things they have in this beautifully designed case. So let's dive right in. So the first thing you notice when you get your radius is, wow, is the packaging not just absolutely gorgeous? I mean, it's really, really pretty. Uh, it even has a little magnetic door on the box. I mean, it's it's almost too pretty to open. Open it up, you've got a beautiful design here, radius. Within that little envelope, you've got your instruction manual. And then behind that, you have your target. This target is to be used to sight in the radius. Once again, this is a weapons mounted uh, laser rangefinder, so you have to zero it in with your weapon. So it includes that target there, as well as the instruction manual. All very nice. Then of course, you've got the radius itself. It's got a nice foam packaging. Pull it out. See, there's sides of this. Really good looking piece of equipment. Your battery compartment on top, you've got your QD rail attachment on the bottom, your adjustments. Set that aside. This the rest of the package. It's got a little box back here in the back. Includes a couple of your accessories. This is a little target you'll use to sight in the radius. And then you've got some extra Velcro patches for the uh, compression switch and then an extra uh, part there. You've also got your pressure switch, which activates the radius, and then you've got a couple of these strips that will be used as part of the sighting in process for the radius. Uh, and that's everything that comes in the box. So uh, next step will be taking it out to the range, getting it hooked up to the rifle, and then zeroing the radius and seeing how it works. So now that we've gone through all the pieces and parts that come with your radius, uh, we're out here at the range. We're going to go ahead and get it sighted in. Um, as you can see, I've mounted it to my KRG chassis. Uh, I just used a simple Magpul MOE L2 rail, which is mounted right here on the side of the spigot. Uh, ideally, I'd like to mount it back here at some point, but for right now, I don't have the proper mount to do that. Um, so until then, we're going to go to mount it here. Uh, the reason I want to move it back would just be if I do end up using this in a competition. A lot of times we're putting our rifles through barricades and things. Really don't want to beat up radius uh, having it up there in front. So I'd like to have it closer back here uh, to eliminate that potential problem. But we're going to go ahead and pull out the uh, cider target in here, set it up, and sight it in. Um, I would highly recommend going to Silencer Co.'s um, Special Weapons Research channel on YouTube and looking at their video on how to sight this in. It's extremely well done. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and try our own attempt at uh, getting it sighted in. So once again, right here in the top part of your case is your instruction manual. If I can get it out. And with that comes the radius target. On the target, you'll notice you've got a couple spots here for the reflective tape. The reflective tape is also in the box. So we'll pull that out. Got these little orange strips held together with some tape. So I'm going to go ahead and stick those to my target. These are going to allow us to uh, see the visible laser and get this sighted in. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so step one of the target is to take these orange reflective strips, place them here and here. So we'll do that quickly. All right. So step two is measuring from the center of my optic to the red laser, visible, vis visible laser indicator to determine where on the target I need to put my dot. So I'll do that now. So for sake of screwing it up, I'm going to go ahead and read it directly from the manual from Silencer Co. So the crosshairs on the zeroing target represent the center of your optic. Measure the distance from the center of your barrel to the center of your optic. Make a mark on the provided zeroing target to note the location of the center of your barrel. So I'll do that now. So I forgot my calipers, but luckily I've got a little right in the rain here with a ruler on it. So I'm going to go ahead and measure in inches from the center of my barrel to the rough center of my optic. It looks to be spot on at two inches. So then I'm gonna come down on my target 
measure down two inches, which these are already in inch squares. So two inches there, and I can put um, a mark, and then I'm gonna measure over from the barrel to the middle of the radius, and that's where I'm gonna put my dot. So from the barrel, center of the barrel here, to the center of the laser, looks to be two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to go ahead and put my dot down two inches and then to the left two and a quarter inches. And right here is where that laser is, is coming out of. So that's where we are measuring to and from is this little hole right there. So I'll show you up close. So I'll come down one, two. That would be the center of my barrel. And then I'm gonna to come to the left, two and a quarter. And that's where I'm gonna put my reflective dot. Now I've got my reflective dot. Go ahead and unstick him and put him right over the top of that point and we'll hang the target. So I've gone ahead and attached the uh, pressure switch in the bottom. There is a little cap that comes out. I just put that in the little baggie that came in the, in the uh, box. So I've got that there. So now I can just hit this button. I haven't mounted yet to the rifle. Not sure where I want to do it mount it to, but it is working. So now what we're gonna do is turn on the optical laser. So it's just this little button right here. It's off now, now it's on. And then we're gonna take and put it on the target and uh, get this thing zeroed. All right, so looking through the scope, if I move it around, I can, anytime I run that laser, I mean, it's the bright of day, but if I run that laser over that reflective tape, it definitely shows up and right now I've got it way off to the right and low so I'm gonna have to come way left I think it's probably enough that I'm gonna have to turn on this for a while get it over there where it needs to be I will say this wheel is kinda tricky to get to Okay, so now I'm directly in line. I need to come a little bit more to the left. Okay, it's like it's on. So now we can play with it, see how well it works. So I've got a GoPro set up over here looking at the radius. So you'll be able to see the screen from the radius and what it reads out. I've got it set in yards. I'm gonna go ahead and pick a few targets around the valley here to uh, range and then see how the results compare to my Vectronics Terrapin. Uh, this is really a military grade range finder. They run about two grand. Uh, so I think this will be a good solid benchmark for the radius. So let's go ahead and, and pick some targets. Um, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and just do the 100 yard backer down here. So the Terrapin reads it out at 99 yards. And then turn on the radius. I've got my pressure switch right over here. I'm going to put it on the backer. 98. So pretty good. Let's go ahead and go to, let's see, this large tree over here. 248 yards. I'm gonna have to get creative here to be able to uh, line up on it. So the radius is giving me 250 yards. And my terrapin is giving me 249. So we're right in there. Let's go ahead and shoot up a little higher. All right, so I repositioned the camera so you can see a little bit better. Obviously, this isn't the most ideal range in the world to be doing this, but uh, it's what we have, so we'll make it work. So I'm gonna go ahead, we've done the tree there. I'll pick a rock out here as well. Let's see, I've got a uh, 
really light colored sagebrush there. 291. Let's see what the terrapin says. Gave me 289, so pretty close. All right, let's do something a little bit further. So I've got a rock way up there high. So now I've got it at 400 yards. 397 on the terrapin. All right, let's go a little further. Another rock face right up there. Go ahead and get this. Four thirty-two. It's deceiving. These things look a lot further away than they are. Four thirty. So I'm going to go ahead and pick something really far out there. Try to at least. Seven ninety-seven. Seven ninety-five. So out to eight hundred yards, doing really well. Uh, let's try if we can get a better position here and. Maybe shoot as far as we can see in this particular position. Granted, it is bright out today, so we may not be able to get the range that far out there. Let me pick another spot. 733. So it won't range that next ridge. 787. It just does not want to get that next ridge. 811. Yeah, so it seems like we've kind of capped out here. It's not giving me any readings any further out than about 800 yards. It's kind of disappointing. Yeah, it's just not wanting to give me anything. 798. 813. Nothing. Well, I can't get any of those to work. Let's see how far it is that I was trying to range. 1164. 1180. And the parts I was able to range right in that 789, 790 mark. So, I mean, it's weapons mounted. Bright day out. Be able to get out to 800 yards, 900 yards. Uh, literally, the surfaces that I'm shooting are rocks and trees, uh, not reflective surfaces. And it is very, very bright out. In fact, the sun is shining right on those rocks. So it's probably having a really hard time picking up the uh, laser. So, so not a totally conclusive test. Um, obviously, I didn't expect the radius to keep up with the terrapin. Terrapins uh, can range out to 4,000 plus yards. Uh, but the claim is that it's able to range out to a thousand, I believe, in, in good conditions. Um, so I think it's, it's done pretty well for 800 yards. Um, I would have liked to see it hit that 1100, but uh, furthest I could really get was about 800. So let's play with it some more and see if we can get a little further distance. All right, so I took a minute with the Terrapin and started looking around. Found a spot up here that's about 1050. So I'm going to put the uh, radius on it. And I've got a good steady rest up against this bench. And there's a rock right up there. 1,036. Got to do it once. 1,036. 1,039. So over a thousand yards and just shooting at basically rocks and trees up there. Um, so that is impressive. Um, the 1,200 yards over here, 1,150. I'm not really disappointed with that. Um, you know, how often are you out shooting at 13, 1400 yards, especially, you know, if you are, you're going to have something a little more capable probably, but pretty freaking awesome. Got a sight of it in, got the range out to uh, 1050 yards, 1030 yards, pretty solid. And uh, so far I'm pleased with it. Pretty awesome little setup. I'm excited to go out and try this with some night vision or some thermal and do some ranging at night. Uh, that's one big key item when you think about, man, I think I want to go and try to do some shooting at night. You start thinking, well, how am I going to range? If I can't see it, I can't really range. And so it becomes a very complicated uh, issue 
But with the radius, it's really the only way that you can do that effectively without spending, you know, even thousands more dollars on another piece of equipment uh, like a like a you know, nighttime rangefinder. So uh, pretty pretty awesome. I'm excited to go out and try this out, especially for like coyote hunting and things. I think it's going to be really awesome, and I'm excited to throw it on my SPR and do some shooting with it as well. As you can see, we're back in the reloading room. I want to just wrap up by touching on a couple of things about the radius, and then we'll close out the review. Uh, for starters, uh, one of the things I noticed when I was uh, editing the video is that I completely forgot that you can reorientate the screen on the radius depending on how you mount it on your rifle. So there's a lot of different ways you can mount it to a rifle. Um, as we talked about before, you can mount it actually up on top. Um, spur mounts, uh, they make a fantastic, very high-end scope mount. They make probably the best mount you can get. It basically replaces the uh, top portion of the, the ring itself and has a rail that sits up above your optic where you can mount your radius right up here on top. From the factory, it comes with the screen facing or, or being orientated in that way uh, so that you can see it left to right. Uh, now with me mounting it on the side of the, the rifle, um, I completely forgot when we were doing the review and recording at the range that you can actually remove these little screws here and flip the orientation of the uh, screen so that it's going side to side when it's mounted like this. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, sort of our final thoughts about the radius and its application. So the instructions to reorientate the screen for the radius are found on page 8 of the instruction manual. Step 1 is to first turn off the radius by holding down the power button. Next you've got these two screws that are just on hand tight that you'll want to loosen in order to reorientate the screen. Simply back these out. You don't have to worry about these falling out and getting lost because they are retained within the radius. So I'll undo those. It's now loose. Um, I've had the most success by grabbing it and just gently rocking it back and forth as I pull it out. And there it goes. Pops out. So you can see the connection there and of course on the back the other end. So from here um, it's important to note that you have the dimming buttons. Those are at the top of the screen so the, the numbers will read left to right here. This is the top, this is the bottom. So I'll go ahead and reorientate that with the dimming buttons on the top and then go ahead and screw these in again. I recommend just going hand tight with these. They do have slots on them for a screwdriver if you wanted to get a little tighter but uh, seems to be holding it on there very well the way it is. So I'm going to turn it back on. And there you go. So in wrapping up our initial impressions of the radius and this uh, kind of initial review that we've done, uh, we certainly have not put the radius through all of the paces that we would have liked. We certainly haven't tested it to the max. Uh, so these are our, just our initial impressions of the radius, but overall they are good impressions. Uh, we're excited about the radius. I'm excited to go out and test it further, put it through those paces and see what it's really capable of. Um, as far as initial impression, I'm gonna go ahead and give the radius a B plus, A minus. Um, as far as pros go, the reason I'm going to give it such a great rating is it's very innovative. It's very well executed, like most things from Silencer Co. Clearly, somebody put a lot of thought into the design of the product. They've executed on that design. They've thought out all the potential uh, needs that you may have as a user, and they've executed it in a very, very high fashion. Um, so in that regard, the radius is awesome. It also fulfills a very unique need, um, especially for those that might be using it for hunting. Uh, this is going to dramatically speed up your ability to engage a target uh, because it's integrating into your weapon system. So if you're able to write up a dope card and put it in like a sidewinder dope card holder and place it on the side of your rifle, you can literally go out and you may have a moving target like a coyote and be able to hit that button while you're on the gun looking through the scope at your target, range it, look at your dope card and know exactly what to hold or what to dial. It's going to dramatically speed up that process of acquiring that target versus having to grab a rangefinder, range it, look at your dope, then do all that stuff, get back on the gun, find your target. It's a huge leap forward in that sense. So for that I give it high marks, uh, very innovative and exceptionally well executed. Now let's talk about the cons. 
will the radius replace my Terrapin or my Bushnell Arc 1 Mile or a G7 by Gunworks or a Leica 1600 or a Kilo 2000 by 6R? Absolutely not. This rangefinder is not capable of ranging out to a mile or to 2,000 yards um, under the worst of conditions. Now, with rangefinders, um, it's probably one of the trickiest pieces of equipment to select and find a product that you're happy with because if you're looking for a rangefinder that you want to consistently be able to range out to a thousand yards, you want to pick a rangefinder that's built to range out to a mile or 2,000 yards in order to make sure that at a thousand yards, under any circumstance, under any condition, you're going to be able to range that distance. So with that, this is designed to be a thousand yard rangefinder, and I think it's very capable at 700, 800, and 1,000 yards, but it is not built to go 1,300, 1,400, 1,500 a mile on a consistent basis where a lot of these others are. So for that reason, it's kind of a con in that it's not gonna completely replace all my other options, and a lot of those options are a lot cheaper or less expensive than the Radius. Um, this year we saw the Kilo 2000 by 6 hour come out, which is extremely tiny, and it's amazing. I've seen guys range out to as much as 3,000 yards with their SIG Kilo, and it's 500 bucks, you know, between 450 and $500, where the Radius is closer to 1,000. But is a Kilo going to allow you to, you know, acquire a target like a coyote as quickly? Heavens no, it's a completely separate piece of equipment. You've gotta have that hanging around your neck, you've gotta have your gun, you've gotta have your dope card, and you gotta be juggling all those things to execute. Um, also, if you're planning on doing any night vision shooting or thermal shooting, a radius is a must. Otherwise, you're spending thousands more for some kind of a night vision capable rangefinder. I don't even know if something like that necessarily exists, and I know that if it does, it's gonna be extremely expensive, like anything in the night vision thermal world. Um, so the radius is really a must have if you wanna get into uh, nighttime varmint hunting and shooting. Um, yeah, so as far as fit and finish execution, awesome. Um, the only limitation that I see would simply be that this isn't going to replace my go-to rangefinder that I keep in my bag when I want to try to shoot out to a mile, or maybe I'm in really bad conditions and I want something that's capable of ranging 2,000 yards so that I know for sure under any circumstances I can shoot 1,000. And in that sense, the radius maybe falls a little bit short uh, for its price point. Overall, would I buy the radius? Absolutely. Would I recommend it to somebody else? Absolutely. It's an awesome product and very well developed and it's backed by an awesome company. By personal experience, I know that Silencer Co. will back up this product, so if you have any problems at all, they're going to be there to assist you and uh, help you out with the product like they do with their suppressors and other items. Uh, another cool thing, once you register the Radius, um, you actually can get a free Silencer Co.'s uh, Special Warfare or Special Weapons Research t-shirt that they'll mail out to you. So I'm excited to get this thing registered and get myself a sweet t-shirt to wear. So if you have any questions about the Radius or uh, any suggestions on further videos that we could do with the Radius, please go ahead and uh, leave a comment here. Also would love it if you'd hit the like button, give us a thumbs up, and then of course uh, sharing the video and subscribing to our channel really helps support LRSU and helps us deliver more videos like this and more educational videos. If you have suggestions on how we can make the channel better, please go ahead and send us a message or uh, leave us a comment. You can also email us at info at longrangeshootersofutah.com. And of course, you can pick up your decals, hats, t-shirts, all the LRSU gear we have on our website, longrangeshootersofutah.com forward slash shop. Thanks for joining us and uh, tune in again for our future review. Thanks.
Dead air armament. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm Kelly McMillan. Fred Shot Show 2016. We're gonna give it a shot right now. 